Praise the Lord. Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks for again staying tuned uh, to our channel. And um, it's a pleasure to stay connected with you uh, through these sessions um, that we are discussing. And our mission and vision for all the uh, Christians, believers or unbelievers, you may be a um, uh, a new believer who just got saved and uh, you didn't know how to read Bible or you don't know what to consider the most in the Bible, what to consider. There is nothing that you can consider the least in the Bible. All those things are that are written in the Bible are the best, best and the must, right? And uh, But still, we need to prioritize. We need to prioritize and we need to pick and choose um, to match it with the situations um that are that are happening in our life right the circumstances and the uh, happenings may vary from person to person and uh, that's why we always we always had told and we will be telling the same that everything is the best and the must in the bible but then you need to pick the right things at the right point of time and that's where you need to seek the help of the holy spirit and that's where we are being called by god highly inspired and tremendously convicted by god to talk about these things, the most ignored or the things that are not even considered by Christendom or, or, or the people in, uh, in, in, you may be belonging to any congregation, doesn't matter. But then if you are staying away from Bible, it's, it's, it's like a crime, right? You're killing yourself. It's as good as that. You're allowing devil to uh, capitalize on you. He's holding his position in your life and your body is no more the temple of God. It's a temple of the demonic host that sustain in you and they are driving you. And that shouldn't be the case of any believer. And if you are a person who have uh, understood who Jesus was and who Jesus is, Jesus was the son of God, but now he is not just the son of God, he's our elder brother and he's also our intercessor. He took new roles, right? But the Trinity is still the same. Father, the son and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit concept was not there in the Old Testament. The Spirit of God came and dwells upon a person and he gets that power. For example, Samson. And then he will be beating the pe people uh, with one donkey's jaw. He kills thousand people and the Spirit leaves him. And then he goes and lies on the lap of Delilah. Where else? So <laughs> there is no consistency in the life of a man of God or prophet or whatever. Elijah at one point of time, he commands. Um, the heavens to be shut and the rain doesn't come. On the other hand, he, he goes and, you know, leans on a tree and says, enough of it and may I, may I die. And about that, we explained in the silent personalities of the gospel in, in a, about Elijah. We have explained what kind of tree was it. It was a poisonous tree. He deliberately went and sat under the tree. Why? Because it is uh, emitting certain poisonous uh, elements and people who breathe that, they will die soon. These are the kind of things we have also explained. So there is no consistency in the life of a man of God or in the life of a prophet or prophetess. Miriam, one side she sings beautiful song and the other side she curses Moses and she gets leprosy. What else? So the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament is a New Testament is talking about a born again believer who is convicted by the Holy Spirit, who had given away all his um, sinful deeds. He is dead to the past and he is born again to the future and he's marching ahead with all confidence, all worked up, not with anxiety, but with that, what, what to say, that kind of excitement, right? How the new life is shaping him up and while he's walking in the excitement, there are going to be lots of battles. It's like a spiritual warfare. You become the uh, closest ally to the Holy Spirit and the worst enemy to the evil spirit right that's why it's a spiritual warfare and holy spirit is going to help us but you need to stay connected to the word of god you need to stay connected to the exhortations you need to stay you need to be soaked in the laws and commandments of god and you need to be led by the word of god which is the light and lamp to our body and life bible says in proverbs 6:23 and it will also instill the reproof and instructions at regular point of time what corrections are necessary in your life what introspective anal analysis you may have to do within yourself and you will have to discover reinvent things and start shifting the focus from the bad scenario to a uh, to a scenario which will lead you to light from darkness you are pulled towards light 
yeah from a broad way which welcomes you to sin you have to choose and shift realign into a narrow way that leads you to heaven and what can make you do this the word of god only can be that um, axle you know that axle right which is a small wheel which controls the ship it is described in james chapter 1 and 2 um, yeah at the tongue is compared in james 3 also sorry james 3 it is actually told that tongue is like that axle of the ship which controls the direction similarly the word of god is the one which controls our decisions our discerning capabilities our thought process right our judgmental capacity our analytical skills everything is is being governed by the word of god and people always have this misconception of not paying attention to uh, the word of god the exhortations the the admonishing words and the epistles and the laws the commandments the instructions rather they say i'm going to be led by the spirit of god you will not be led by the spirit of god without you being filled with the word of god right i i keep telling you this example i will repeat it nth time i'm telling this there is a small book that is your inner man is going to hold pen and paper or or pen and book right and he's going to start writing down not scribbling writing down all the verses you meditate you may memorize and there is no harm in that right you you can memorize so much and um, kind of uh, get a degree in university why can't you memorize the word of god if possible memorize the whole bible yeah there is torah uh, five books of moses um, uh, which is called as torah in the, in the in the jewish version right and all those pharisees right rabbis they will tell all the five books without missing a single word all 613 commandments written there they will tell it by heart upside down top to bottom bottom to top you need not go to that extent but at least you know need to know what are the promises of god 1050 promises uh, or laws and commandments um, uh, which is also promises nothing but uh, in new testament and 613 in the old testament do you know at least that, that much if not the bible cover to cover that's too much for an ask but then if you love god you will not think that it is too much for an ask you will start reading you will start pressing hard you may achieve or you may not achieve that's a different thing but how much you love god you have to expose through your deeds right i'm not asking you to sit down and start memorizing oh a for apple b for boy not like that right it's about being the doer of the word more than being the hearer right i just told it for an example if it's a bad example ignore no problem but the point here is you need to have that light upon the promises of god and those are the things which will be recorded inside of you written in that book by i mean the the inner man the inner spirit we are all created with the spirit apart from the holy spirit we know that right you don't know about that please uh, uh, subscribe to our channel we have explained that in many series especially the i think it's a um, it's 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 a judgment series or truth about the cross series i'm not sure you can go through it and you will find the difference between body soul and spirit three things are there right um, and you need to understand what it is and with the spirit the inner man the holy spirit works the holy spirit will remind you of what is being written in that book the inner man will have bad memory or he's already depressed because of the wiles of the devil or attacks of the devil or the spiritual warfare or the troubles or trouble makers but the holy spirit will give him that energy will give him that memory power will remind him of what he had written down turn to page number 5 which page number 5 not the bible right there is a smaller bible smaller version inside of you and you don't do that you have a big problem in life beloved and that's the reason why we are time and again um you know kind of emphasizing you and asking you to be emphatically inspired to read the word of god for every good reason for your own good for your own benefit no one else is going to benefit it's you it's you and you alone no i myself and me will benefit by reading the word of god why because the holy spirit works in harmony with these things that are inside of you if your sub subconscious is filled with all about lust pornography and uh, you know all alcoholic and um, all kind of bad talks ugly talks dirty talks first of all the holy spirit will not be there to remind you but evil spirit will remind you enough on the negative aspect or the negative side or on the dark side of life that's called as backsliding walking backward not marching forward walking backward right and that's that that's the kind of differentiation uh, you can see uh, in the in the quality of a life between um, 
you know, a believer and non-believer, right? I hope you are with me so far. And that's why we are getting into these kind of sessions where we talk about exhortations. Exhortation is what I'm explaining again about the exhortation. Exhortation is nothing but urging our brethren and sisters to shock themselves in the word of God, to seek for the word of God, to seek for the promises, what Bible is saying, what God is saying. And you know, the only book that is written by God is the Bible. And except that everyone is reading every other book. This, this uh, uh, pastor wrote that and, you know, that evangelist wrote this and this uh, lady who came from heaven wrote this. I don't want to name that person. The most selling copies was that person's book and that's the lie of the devil. No one can go to hell and come back. Yeah, it is proved in Luke 16, the Lazarus and rich man story. There is a gulf and whoever returns, they can't even cross or interchange their places. Forget about coming back to earth. How this lady in the world come back to earth? There was only one person whose life came back to earth. That's what Jonah's life. And we explained that in the in one of the miscellaneous series, Jonah versus Jesus. Uh, that is a series. Please go through that. Not serious. There is a session. Please go through it. Right. And why? Because that was left as an example, a symbolical example for Jesus. Uh, and he left it as a sign because some people ask, what is a sign? As how Jonah's soul was in Sheol, you know, Hades. A place of torment, hell. Jonah went to hell, you know that, by the way. And he came back. All evidences are in Jonah, book of Jonah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. You take and read. We explain that. You just go through that session. We have beautifully explained that by the help of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is, if you're not soaked in the word of God, you're going to be deceived, brothers. And again, one more series. Know your enemy. Groups of evil spirits that are working against you day and night day and night quarreling with you to do what to deceive you nothing else if they have implanted deception in you if they have been successful in um, you know bringing that deception or make, deceiving you or misleading you that's enough every other plan of the devil or the demonic forces will fall in place without an effort everything will automatically happen but you look at the other way around if you are uh, deeply rooted in the word of God, if you are being led by the spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit, right? What happens? You start marching forward. There is nothing that can stop your growth. You will be just prosperous and prosperous and prosperous. I'm not talking about materialistic prosperity. Spiritual prosperity. When spiritual prosperity is put in place, materialistic pros prosperity is automatic, brother. Right? When the power is there, you switch on how the bulb burns not about a fused bulb a bulb which is in a burning condition right i'm talking about us if you are in a fused state going and attending this meeting that meeting getting misled by false prophets and false teachers then you are that fused bulb now electricity is in you holy spirit is helpless but you will not burn there will be no fire in you huh. that's the point right and you need to be tuned to the right doctrines right okay cool now we are in this business of reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, right? And where we had been dealing with exhortations. We dealt with rejoice always and then pray without ceasing. First two chapters. In the third chapter today, we are talking about give thanks in everything. Why I took that enough 10, 12 minutes is to help you understand what it means about exhortation and why one have to be soaked with the word of God and why one shouldn't be dull heart or hard heart, hard heart and um, uh, one shouldn't be right uh, hard heart and or dull heart in seeking the word of God or soaked in the laws and commandments Right in fact, it's not about your life seeking for laws and commandments It's other way the laws and commandments will be instructing how you should lead your life Yeah, that tells how matured you are a Christian how much you have grown in that level of understanding and maturities spiritual maturity we call it as right good so we are now stepping into the third exhortation and i will read it from you from the word of god uh, 1 thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 in everything okay i just stressed it right what everything everything a brother yeah everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you Everything means good thing or bad thing immediately, right? Like a kindergarten student, everyone will ask, actually, you are a good student. 
don't worry whether you are in kindergarten level or primary school or high school pu or college don't worry uh, god, god, uh, there is no bad question in the dictionary of god any question is a good question for god just get it ask and get it clarified and then don't keep lingering to the question stick to the answers right that's where the problem comes with a christian believer that they start developing question after question they don't pick the right answer although it is spoken by the holy spirit or by the father himself they don't have that confidence or belief why because you don't have the discerning capability you are always confused who is talking to me is it the evil spirit holy spirit god or devil right that's why you need to always be soaked in the word of god and that will be the light and lamp to your body and feet bible says in proverbs 6:23 right when you are walking in the light what else, what can confuse you tell me you will be a man of clarity you will be the children of light right in everything means everything good situation thank god bad situation thank god double the time why why ask me why ask yourself why you tell me why i'll tell you why good situation it has already happened brother say one thanks and leave it there don't fast and pray oh i want to clap my hand more faster than what i used to bang against each you know <laughs> i don't know some people even bang their head on the wall you know that's the modern way of thanking god there is one crazy church somewhere in us or somewhere right they they bang against the wall and they thank god until they bleed stupid fellows right <laughs> you don't have to thank god too much for the things that have already happened but thank have the thankful attitude always be grateful to god for what he had done right but where you should be more thankful double the time triple the time million times is thank god that you permitted a bad situation thank god that you permitted a sickness why because your glory is going to be revealed a miracle is going to happen deliverance is going to take place liberalization is going to happen right i'm going to become a man of perfection right maybe your chastisement you have punished me by permitting this sickness or this trial or this allowing this temptation god doesn't tempt by the way he allows temptation right he allows the trials count it all joy when you are led into a situation that uh, is like a trial a tribulation right or a troubles a moment or you are going to be harassed by somebody at workplace Yeah, if it's a sexual harassment, please report to HR. I'm not talking about that, right? Harassment means your boss is always moody, yelling at you, idiot, stupid fellow, come here. This is how he calls you. How do you feel, brother? Tell me, right? All um, unparliamentary language he uses. Harassment. You go and report. Yeah, they will take action against the supervisor, but he will ensure that you are fired. He will put in some false allegations. Do not complain, but go to God. go to god and tell him this is what my situation is but i want to thank you why because you are going to make him work under me is it possible or not you tell me i'll give you a good example no where was joseph deployed potiphar's house potiphar lifted him potiphar's wife deceived him he was put to dungeon and jail years later what happened potiphar was reporting he was down under joseph i think four or five levels down under joseph and joseph never went in vengeance after potiphar or his wife or whatever has happened but i'm very sure off the records they might have come and definitely touched his feet and asked for forgiveness which is not recorded in bible i'm sure it would have happened right because they want to survive who became boss over uh, whom joseph became his boss it was just like king right king's face is not seen joseph go to anything to joseph king said is it possible or not i'm talking from your bible and my bible right it is possible brother that's why you should thank god with that attitude of gratitude and confidence and believe that god can change things with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible matthew 19 26 all this fill in the blanks you will do properly but when it comes to that belief system the trusting system right that is not your your core values your core values are is not the trust in god belief in god only when it happens i will believe yeah until then what to do look at me the son of man is always in under pressure dull heart oh you know what is the trouble upon me can't you see the crown of thorns on my head if you want don't see the crown of thorns take a crown of thorns and cast it on your head you will know what it is don't joke around like this right 
listen to the truth about the cross series where we have explained in one session one and a half hours about the physical sufferings and the abuse that lord jesus went into the harassment the physical harassment and mental harassment is the only thing which the world offered to the son of man, son of god right are you comparing yourself with the son of god do you at least understand what it is for an example i'll tell you take one ton you know one ton what is the length one and a half inches one and a half inches means how many 13 centimeters <laughs> you just take it and try to peel your skin or something like that don't do it i'm just joking i'm telling you there is no way you can uh, you can imagine what jesus went through but even in the midst of that he was thanking god not my will may your will be done god i want to thank you that your will is going to be finally fulfilled through me the very reason why i was sent to this earth is going to be accomplished his heart was overwhelmed with joy even in the midst of suffering right and you don't have to suffer you don't have to hang yourself on the cross and prove uh, all the apostles have done that and uh, anyway this is a democratic world and uh, you know the tribulation has not yet started so you are spared for a moment right the early christian ages uh, early christian churches right in the first century uh, people were killed even more brutally than what jesus would have suffered or peter would have suffered or james would have suffered right people were peter paul was beheaded and uh, you know isaiah the prophet was uh, you know kind of they 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 taken a wooden log they made it hollow they made isaiah to sit in that wooden uh, block which is hollow and they have uh, kind of cut him into two halves vertically this is how the prophets you know death was witness and all these prophets rose up when jesus resurrected the bodies of the saints were resurrected from the grave they did not name why they will start building churches in the name of elijah in the name of elisa all of them would have gone into the town and they all would have spoken about jesus this is my imagination everybody going and knocking the door hey you know what i am obadiah jesus is resurrected hey you know what i am habakkuk Jesus is resurrected. Hey, you know what? I am Isaiah. Imagine, no? They are going around the towns and villages and talking about this great Jesus who was resurrected. You don't have to go through that suffering, brother. It's all done. Matthew eight seventeen. Jesus carried all our suffering, iniquities, and sicknesses and diseases, transgressions, everything on Himself, and He died for us. Only believe that you are His property. You belong to Him, and you need to respect the Word of God. Sorry, I went a little bit outside, but I'm coming back. Well, not fully outside, but I'm just telling you. You need to remember all that caused for Jesus. For your sake, he had to go through all these harassments, troubles, right, temptations. Yet he died as a lamb without blemish, right. Suffering in the flesh, even before he was crucified, is the most worst thing because the last twelve hours is definitely a brutal scenario that's been ever witnessed by the mankind i'm not denying that but even more than that what you know living a life without sin right he feels like slapping somebody don't you feel like slapping these pharisees the kind of questions they were asking imagine if you were in the shoes of jesus what would you do i think i will rip them by their beard first thing and make them bleed seriously what kind of questions they come to test uh, jesus but jesus would control his temper <laughs> then you may ask a question then why did he whip every, everyone he did not whip anyone is there anywhere written in the bible that this human being got hurt and that fellow was bleeding no he did not hurt the human beings he was just toppling the tables money exchanging tables and he let the dove free to fly and uh, the sheep were uh, broken from their fences etc yeah he cleaned up he did not hurt the human beings yeah you need to read the bible carefully <laughs> Jesus knows how to control his temper why he is very careful not to sin and that is the suffering in the flesh right Jesus also grew up he he came up out of his teenage uh, like 13 14 and hormones were all working up and there would be young girls moving around and he had girlfriends too girlfriends means not the girlfriends of this age right girlfriends means uh, Lazarus sisters Mary and Martha they grew up together i don't think he he had the attitude to lust but that mindset would have crossed devil would have brought that kind of hormonal uh, pressures right and jesus would overcome he would not make a decision uh, to fall for lust that that's what is called a suffering should you think twice to thank this great god jesus for the suffering that he has allowed right to reveal his glory 
through his suffering, through the resurrection, through the blood, through the name, you are anyway getting your victory. Victory is on your way. Victory is assured, actually. Victory is taken care in the cross itself. That's what Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Victory is assured. Like uh, when they, uh, what to say, when you go and purchase something uh, in some shop, they will say, if you purchase this product, there is an assured gift. Right? You purchase a television, there is an assured gift of, maybe they will give you an egg beater as an assured gift like that. If you trust in the name of Jesus, the assurance is you're going to get victorious. You're going to come out victoriously. There is no two ways about it. Right. First of all, you need to believe that when you believe that 80 percent of your problem is gone, it's vanished. Why? Victory is assured, boss. Then what is the problem, dude? You don't have a problem. Absolutely. <laughs> so you need to just watch for the day where you will register that victory. But we need to wait in patience. Why? Your patience is put to test. Your faith is put to test. Your trust and reliability upon God is put to test. Without testing, he is not going to help you move to the next level in your spiritual growth. Right? Whatever may be the growth, material or spiritual growth, you will be tested for the smaller thing. And then he goes, takes you to the next level. He will test you in that little, uh, you know, the, uh, thing that is medium sized. And then he will take you to the bigger thing. And he will take you to the biggest thing. And finally, will help you to reach your destiny according to his divine will and plan. According to his timing. That's why I told you initially, let not anxiety drive you. Right? Let patience drive you. Be filled with patience. Those who shall wait patiently on the feet of the Lord, they shall renew their strength like eagles. Isaiah 40, 39, I think, 29, 30, 31. Three verses you can read. Right? Give thanks in everything, brother. I'm taking little time, right? And we are going to talk a little more in detail. Um, right? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is the will of God? God willing, let it happen. You know what is God willing? Never say that God willing. God willing is, is to help you or enable you to thank him for what is yet to take place. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Be a person who all, always visualizes on unseen things. Seen things are temporary. Unseen things are permanent. Start creating things that are yet to take place in belief and trust. But in thanksgiving. Yeah. Why you need to thank? Why you need to thank? We will, we will go through the many verses and uh, a lot of incidents in the Bible. We will help you understand it a little better. But I'm just setting the context. We are still in the basics. This itself becomes a sermon for many people, but I'm calling it as basics. Why? You need to understand the theory behind or the truth behind Thanksgiving. Because Thanksgiving is something that attracts the presence of God. God will see how a bee, honeybee gets attracted towards the nectar. Yeah, mouth-watering honeybee rushes towards the nectar of the flower. Why? Mouth-watering, what else? Right? It loves the taste. <laughs> Likewise, you know what attracts God towards you? The Spirit of God towards you, the Holy Spirit? He will smell that sweet-smelling fragrance. What can emit that sweet-smelling fragrance out of you? You may be broken. Your eyes may be filled with tears. Your heart may be filled with sorrow and grief. You're so disheartened and discouraged. You're frustrated. You're dismayed. No problem. But from your mouth, you're going to tell God. From your heart, you're going to reveal, I have faith in you and your mouth will confess. I want to thank you, Lord. My depressions are going to be turned into success. Yeah. The days of mourning are going to be turned as days of joy. Yeah. You're going to build those, enable those seasons of joy. And I'm going to rejoice. For sure, you're going to Definitely give me victory because you're not a blind or deaf or lame God, right? You can walk pretty much towards me. You can pretty much see in my eyes, in your eyes, what, what I'm going through, Lord. Right? Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. They're talking about various seasons there. And he's the Lord over all the seasons. Seasons of grief, seasons of sorrow, seasons of failure. Likewise, seasons of success, seasons of joy, seasons of happiness, seasons of victory. And he stipulates those seasons within the confined amount of time or period, right? Why? Because to teach you good things, to build that patience, to build that faith, to test your spirit, right? You, you become refined like gold. You're tested, you're grounded, you're tilled. <laughs> and you become purer, you become precious. 
you know before you see that glittering gold in the jewelry shop you know what was the original form it's like garbage golden ore is like garbage and they take it through various processing steps the chemical processing quite interesting you go through the youtube there are at least eight or nine steps they have to go through and finally they will get that one gram golden metal which glitters and hanging around your neck or it's a ring on your finger is that all you see no only a goldsmith will know uh, the garbage behind that gold right and how it started likewise god is going to you know to, uh, uh, to start start thinking reverse behind the garbage in your life the failure in your life sorry not behind uh, ahead of that garbage in your life he is already seeing that golden metal that the days of victory glittering and waiting to welcome you with both arms wide open don't lose patience right but thanksgiving is something that attracts god towards you thank for his son thank for his life thank for how he was brutally killed and thank for the power in the resurrected resurrected name of jesus thank for the blood which was shed and the only instrument or the only thing that the devil is scared of is the blood of jesus blood of jesus defeated the wiles of the devil crushed to said are right under our feet what blood of jesus sacred blood the holy blood thank him for that beloved and i will tell you jeremiah 33:3 automatically takes place he will do mighty things and greater things greater things in the midst of you that you do not know that is yet to take place but it will take place while it take place you will know oh those days i was lingering on the feet of the lord with grief and sorrow heavy heart heavily burdened but god had definitely accounted all of that a god is faithful god matthew 12:36 says every deed right every tear drop he has he has gathered in the bottle bible says in psalm 56 and matthew 12:36 you have to give an account but god also gives an account for what you have gone through right account means what not writing something in a paper and saying hey read it not like that he will bring that uh, instance to happen that incident to happen he will change things he will topple the situation as how we explain about joseph right he will topple the situation and you will be amazed awestruck astonished oh is this me don't you think joseph would have gone through that kind of astonishment although he was a very clear uh, person uh, clear in mindset and vision um, about what god had spoken to him uh, in in the form of a dream right he always stuck to the dream and vision that's what made him to run away from that potiphar's wife and she called to lust with him no he said no my vision is not at fulfilled i am a visionary and god is at work he had that confidence but when the situation came to light he thanked god because he was old testament man but what new testament man well already thank god why because joseph didn't have jesus beloved right there wasn't anything accomplished there wasn't anything done already but for you and me there was something accomplished already on the cross of calvary it's already a done deal and poor joseph didn't have that therefore he couldn't thank already but he had been waiting in patience and in faith and when it happened he thanked god definitely he would have thanked god but you and i can thank god already for what had happened on the cross now we understand in everything why must someone thank god because this is the will and you know now why uh, that's the will of god for you and me in christ jesus okay we are going to talk about few more verses but with tips why and how um, we can start practicing this art of thanking god and you need little bit of practice also right um, so we are going to help you turn your bibles with uh, me to colossians chapter 4 verse 2 and we have entitled we are going to talk about few um, tips the first tip is start practicing thankfulness in your prayer i have spoken already about this but i'm going to talk from the word of god colossians 4:2 continue earnestly in prayer being vigilant in it with thanksgiving right whatever you pray mix it with thanksgiving say thank you god for you have already heard my prayers colossians 3:17 is another verse that i could read for you and whatever you do in word or deed by actions or in by word do all in the name of lord jesus giving thanks to the lord to god the father through him futuristic perspective see giving thanks will majorly come in a futuristic perspective why 
because when it had already happened you know it has already happened and of course your heart will be overwhelming with joy and you will be still crying for what you had gone through and how victoriously god delivered you thank 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 for everything right but uh, the real christian will thank more for what is yet to take place that's the difference you and i can make and that's what bible expects that's why we are proving it from the word of god okay next tip be thankful even in the smallest stuff right when when the little things happen for example you bought a new pair of slippers or a new pair of handkerchief you don't tend to thank god do you or maybe you bought a pen you thank god me you bought a headset some of the cheapest things but you buy a big car or buy a house your own house apartment etc then you thank god fast and pray etc i'm telling you the attitude should not be different between the, you know, the smallest thing versus the biggest thing your attitude must be the same psalm chapter 100 verse 4 is something that we can read for you to help you get reminded that you should be thanking god for everything <laughs> enter into gates i will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart i will enter his courts with praise i will say this is the day that the lord has made i'll rejoice for he has made me glad jesus made me glad jesus made me glad i rejoice for jesus made me glad jesus made me glad jesus made me glad i rejoice for jesus made me glad i couldn't stop myself <laughs> the song was overwhelming in my heart because we all know this right this is all you know sunday school uh, songs enter into his gates with thanksgiving enter into his gates means what there will be no gate waiting with two soldiers on either sides nothing like that right when you just walk into the presence of god when you want to pray when you feel like you know praying thank him already in the futuristic perspective and into his courts be thankful to him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations so you need to have this attitude in um, and and for example maybe there is a washing machine and it was broken and god fixes it for you right in a way that he avoids uh, you to spend more money and buy a new one he fixes it with a cheap cost or with a cheap repairing uh, instrument or with a cheap a cheap way of repairing things and the washing machine functions in in its in its normalcy don't you thank god you need to thank god thank god that it worked i had to spend only you know 10 dollars to get it fixed otherwise i will have to spend another you know 500 dollars to buy a new washing machine thank god do we have that gratitude we need to have that gratitude and that's why we now give thanks in the worst situations too now maybe a storm stormy situation there may be a rough situation in your life obviously you will have all the attitude to pray but you will not tend to give him thanks um and and, and that's why uh, this 1 Thessalonians 5:18 is going to be very important in everything give thanks it's already been said matthew chapter 6 verse 20 matthew chapter 6 is a very beautiful chapter lot of tips about how to pray is being written there matthew 6 5 i will read it for you and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for the they love to pray standing in the synagogues on the corners of the streets and they may be seen by them by men assuredly i say to you they have their reward which means what they will not be even considered as men of god but you when you pray go into your room when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you publicly will reward you openly this is the method matthew 6 is more about the method of prayer therefore you will have to read the entire uh, chapter but i will read verse 20 for you but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal why we have to uh, read this verses because in the stormy situation do not have your prayers position from a materialistic perspective brothers right because materialistic blessing is needed not at all denying but that cannot be the reason for your thanksgiving and praise the thanksgiving and praise must be regardless of whether you are blessed materialistic or not sometimes god gives you the victory through your losses he will allow you to lose something to teach you what 
what is called as not to bribe others or not to take bribes right to teach you uh, how not to be miserly when it comes to giving therefore he will allow loss yeah then only you will know oh how much i used to gain did i give anything to anyone see whatever i gained without giving it to others all went in one shot you will change your attitude start thinking why god allows these kind of things <laughs> okay it's tough no bible is little tough it's not easy it's not a novel book or some story that we are going to read and say ha ah, what what goosebumps i got very nice novel no no it's not a novel it's about life living your life and strengthen your strengthening your walk with god walking closer to god james 4:8 says draw nearer to god and he will draw nearer to you how do you not draw nearer to god by changing your thought process changing your lifestyle the attitude the way of thinking it doesn't come automatically in one overnight but you need to practice for it you need to long for it ephesians 5:20 give thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting to one another in the fear of god right if you have this habit um, then what happens is in the stormy situations too you will have that attitude to thank god right let's move the next tip keep thankful in times of financial stress right this is a very important thing the financial stress you do not know how to pay your children's school fees they're going to be kicked out of the school you don't know how to repay the debt you're going to be kicked out of the home the uh, manager bank manager had given you many notices already they're going to auction your home very very tough situations right thomas muller um uh, uh you know that that was an em- evangelist evangelist and uh, he used to run an orphanage and they never had food one night and they all kept the plate empty plates and they started thanking god thank you that you are going to already provide what happened is one truck was carrying lot of food to a function or to a wedding or some it got broken down right in front of orphanage and they couldn't move the truck and it was night already they are not going to get help also so that fellow the driver and one more guy who was coordinating they decided to distribute the food else it will all go waste no they got plenty of food until the nostrils witnessed the food which were gone into the mouth <laughs> it just came out so much the children were even started to puke right so much they ate that's the work of god one example i'm telling you right it mean the midst of financial stress in the midst of the starving situation the midst of hopeless situations not at all easy i will give you one verse philippians 4 6 beautiful verse and i love reading that uh, you shouldn't just love reading it practicing is very tough but it's it's a nice thing to also practice be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication supplication means what you know telling god exactly what is your problem don't hide right by teaching all this techniques don't thank uh, you know kind of camouflaging and hiding your actual problems don't do that bible is not prescribing that you know uh, half heart kind of prayer or hiding something under the carpet as if god cannot lift the carpet and see what is under the carpet nothing like that be honest god loves that honesty therefore you are blameless before god why you have never hid anything from him isn't it be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with the thanksgiving why because you heard my supplication and i'm confident you're going to answer me you will either answer me speedily or slowly or in a medium pace i don't care but you are going to answer why because i live by the word that which concerns me the lord will perfect it psalm 138 and verse 8 you are going to claim the promises right and then you are going to talk to him supplic with supplications with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god you see here this is a commandment this is a commandment make your request known to god don't hide not a single word you want to talk about that every hour talk no problem but talk with faith talk with thanksgiving yeah if you feel relieved if you talk to god every hour about the same requirement 24 times in a day you don't sleep at all huh? you believe me uh, 16 times a day 8 hours we sleep right <laughs> 16 times a day you want to tell him yet you thank him that will relieve you from pressure right financial stress mental pressure depressions whatever it may be this is one of the best technique that you can practice next next tip we are talking about the tips the methods cultivate thankfulness in your outlook brother in your outlook 
don't go with the soberly face sad face beard hitting the ground nothing like that right don't go with that dull uh, head and looking at look at that guy is is looking as if he has just came out of graveyard as if you you look half dead already no when you are a man of confidence you are the one who prayed by faith just no thanking god how should your walk be there may be nothing in hand you don't know how to repay the debt to know tomorrow morning walk like a king's child don't witness that you are a beggar's child no your father in heaven is not a beggar he is the god of sovereignty anything and everything that exists in the world belongs to me that's how joseph became head over potiphar's house potiphar and his house were reporting to him right god can change things the same uh, bank manager can come and say that your credit score is so good your civil score is score so good we are uh, you know we are forgiving you and we are giving you some more time to repay who knows god will bring a better job in that interval and how not just repaying he will also enable you to buy another property without debt you think that god can do this or not tell me may not materialistic spiritually also right you are not able to overcome uh, lust in your heart or you are a person who moment you open your mouth lies will pour out like a gushing water right and you are broken you don't know how to overcome one day god is going to turn you and you are a, you are going to be the man of truth you had been earning money in dollars and millions um through speaking lies but he will make you a billionaire the moment you start speaking the truth try it out brother right but thank god for already what he is going to do to you in the middle of your tensions and your outlook must witness right you must be a man of truth you must be a man walking in confidence you must be a woman your sister in faith understand so i will read a verse for you maybe that will understand uh, and help you understand better romans chapter 8 verse 28 and philippians 16 let's start uh, read with philippians 16 why your outlook should change is going to be confirmed by these two verses and that's it philippians 16 being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ why it is mental until the day of jesus christ is some people have this question second coming or oh, if second coming happens what will happen if second coming happens until that day you are going to be alive no until rapture happens until that day he will take in care you will be taken care or if you are dead and you are going to come along with jesus to fight the battle of armageddon right or in the thousand years of jerusalem reign you don't know what it is a uh? revelation 19 and 20 taken read afterwards hmm? you will understand until that day also he is ready to take care the good work what he began in you you need to walk in that confidence and that's why we are telling hate that sad countenance on your face look at the son of man you know what a sad situation i am going through but just now you came out of the walking out of the prayer room all oh, claiming all the promises but walking down with a downcast eye and downtrodden face don't do that right romans 8:28 everybody may know this right uh, he makes work all things together somebody is turning this side and that side you don't know what it is i will read it for you and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose what is the purpose that god called you and me to the cross right what is the purpose that god uh, identified or help you to you know be shocked in the christian tradition or doctrines or philosophy tell me only one one purpose to help you walk in victory that's it that's why this promise is telling you he will make all things work together it may sound like a bad thing he may sound like a bad boss a bad manager a bad friend bad wife bad husband but he will make those things work together in the futuristic per- perspective for your super good <laughs> aren't you excited to to walk in this christian life and to taste this goodness of god his faithfulness <laughs> i'm really excited so was david so was jesus they are thrilled and you know what they were the most challenged people david was the most challenged in the old testament from his birth i will tell you the cross truth about the cross series we have explained about the uh, slavery form of david comparison to in comparison to jesus please listen to that 
one of the sessions beautiful psalm 69 you won't know what all uh, harassments and abuse he went through being a child right uh, now being a boy to the extent that his own father forgot that there was a son like that that's why he didn't call when samuel asked samuel had to re remind him twice is that all you had then only he remembered right imagine the situation that david went through all challenges similarly jesus right more than joseph because uh, david is a multi skill personality i'll tell you he was a king he was a prophet he was a warrior he was a he was good in romance <laughs> i'm sorry i need to tell you this because he sinned because of that romance romantic attitude and he was good looking and um, he was i wouldn't say he was a good father right um, because otherwise absalom wouldn't be sinning that much and uh, solomon also he gave a negative report when he died he gave a hit list he made him a hitman what was the first thing solomon did hitman he started killing all the enemies of david no that was that shouldn't be the attitude no for forgiving in lips and heart is far away from forgiveness and yet david was the most favored why because he was a old testament fellow he didn't know who jesus was he has not here heard the teachings and sermons of jesus but you and i cannot live by the doctrines of mr david why you are you and i are not old testament people we have jesus what you are angry with your brother in your heart itself you have already murdered him that's how the new testament commandments are you are looking at some female with a lustful attitude you have already prostituted committed prostitution committed adultery finished very very tough to follow the laws and commandments according to the new testament beloved that's why don't compare with the old testament saints new testament you need jesus paul two people said follow me just follow them right whatever they have written 13 epistles turn will change your life upside down and four books about jesus that's more than enough then comes everything else revelation peter first and second and all that right <laughs> you first be thorough in this right oh how you can say that book of revelation can be ignored i never said you can ignore i'm i'm saying that you are not yet there are you thorough in this four books has your life changed according to the 13 epistles doctrines and principles and um, laws and commandments and the instructions given then you are qualified to enter into revelation already don't start thinking about second coming what will happen rapture you know how many miles uh, the blood will travel in the battle of armageddon in what way it's going to help you tell me i'm not discouraging you but then you're not yet there that's why we are touching the basics exhortations basic exhortations right two more things and then we are done now one more thing express thankfulness in trust that's another tip your thankfulness must be well mixed and packaged in trust hmm? what is trust some people have forgotten the spelling of trust <laughs> meaning is different but spelling itself they have forgotten trust means depending on god with complete surrenderance and confidence that hook or crook do or die he will make it work for me that's it i don't know how he will work but i just know this god that's why this david fellow no when uh, the amalekites came and took away all his possessions people were about to stone him to death all this husbands wife children possessions everything were taken but in the midst of that challenging situation he regained strength in the lord bible says and then david said come my lord is going to help me and he went he recovered everything that was taken and plus he took all the spoils from those guys and he brought them back not a single life was killed amalekites uh, you know habit is what you know they will destroy immediately but god did not allow them to destroy why because david's faith was getting overwhelming built in confidence and god is saying hey hang on amalekites i know this is not your character but i'm asking you to halt stay there <laughs> and then he regained his strength and he went and defeated you know what that is called as mixing trust with confidence surrenderance i will read couple of verses for you isaiah Isaiah book of Isaiah I remember it but I want to read it from the word of God Isaiah 12:2 Are you with me or not so far behold God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid for Yahweh the Lord is my strength and my song he also became become my salvation Do I need to really explain it to you very simple no 
I will read couple of Psalms also for you, right? Therefore, it is very clear. Psalm, nothing like Psalms. And don't always look at this David. Oh, he was a king sitting at palace here, nothing to do. Therefore, he started writing poems. Psalms are not poems. The Psalms are witnesses in every situation that it went through. And trust me, 10 out of 10 situations were troublesome situations only. In the middle of war, in the middle of battles, in the middle of enemies chasing his for his life, in the middle of harassments, abuse, this guy starts writing these kind of praises, thanking God for who he is. One of them I will read it for you. Psalm 50, 15, um, 14, sorry, 14 and 15 we can read. Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your woes to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. That's the promise we have. And Psalm 50, 23, whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. To him who orders his conduct aright, conduct, can you order your conduct aright? What does it mean is, can you stay away from lust? Can you stay away from lying lips? Can you stay away from prostituting attitude? Can you stay away from robbery? Maybe yes, but can you stay away from the negative thoughts and the distrust and the unbelief you have on God? Very difficult. If you said that are right, that's what it actually means. If you said that are right, then God says, I will show him the salvation. Until then, God cannot show the salvation even if he's willing to. Why? Because that is a blocker. You're not allowing God. You're resisting, saying that God, go. Disbelief. God, please stay away. I don't want you to perform a miracle. Disbelief is such an ugly thing, brothers and sisters. It cannot allow God to do wonders and mighty things in your life. But when you mix it with thanksgiving, when you mix it with trust, when you mix it with confidence and then present it in the form of, oh God, I thank you. Why? Because my trust in you is bigger than the mountains. Yeah, my confidence and belief in you is far above than the skies. Not just if I'm not reading a poem for you. I'm just telling you, not just the lips of your words, but if it is from your heart, no, oh my goodness, God will immediately rush. Even you resist him saying, no, nothing doing. I will do the miracle right now. Why? Because when God gets excited, I will tell you, heavens rejoice. The angels will be, you know, tumbling and jumping and they will want to do greater things and God commands and they will come and fight the battle for you, beloved. I'm telling you, Please go through all these experiences. It will help you to live a life in style, Christian life in style. Because God created everything and he created for good. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 4 to 5. Right? And God made us and we are his people. Psalm 100 and, and, and verse 3 we say that. It says that for his people is why he is surviving. He is existing to reveal that love to his children. God's love for us never ceases. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. God freely gave us his grace through his only son who was sent to the cross, who suffered and died. The brutal attacks of the human beings of the devil, you know, permitted through uh, by devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. God satisfies your every need. Why? Because Psalm 107, 8 to 9 says that. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. I'm telling you the reasons why one should be thankful to God. For what he is already. Yeah, he's God of the future, the present and the past. He's the same unchanging God. Hebrews 13, 8 says. And you need to have that confidence. The God who helped me to fight that battle and come out victoriously. The last time is the same God even today and for the future. And he's going to help me because he's the God who says that I am your helper. And I'm going to fight it out for you. Hebrews 13, 5. Thank the Lord in every place you go. Psalm 100 and verse 4. And we can express thanks, thankfulness in every part of our daily lives. Colossians 3, 17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You already read that, but I want to read it again. Giving thanks for what is already to us. All right. We end the session with a song. And one of my favorite songs, I give thanks with a grateful heart. Let us sing together. I give thanks 
With a grateful heart, I give thanks <clears throat> to the Holy One. I give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now I will say that I am strong. I will say that I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for me. I give thanks. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful session. Thank you for helping us to understand what is the significance of thanking God before a situation turns to good. There may be a bad moment. There may be a bad situation, a bad circumstances in the life of my brethren and sisters who are tuned to the session, Lord. But you are capable to change that, Lord. Teach us, God, to help. Teach us, God, and help us to thank you before even the situation turns to normalcy. Why? Because that's the trust and confidence we have in you and help us to reveal it and manifest it in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. We will meet you soon with another chapter. Probably that will be our last session or maybe last but one. Uh, but this is the series what we are doing about biblical exhortations. Please share these sessions and uh, to your friends and relatives and your family members. You also please subscribe to our channel. Get access to our, all our materials. And you need any spiritual help. You need any kind of uh, uh, you know help in reading the word of God and growing spiritually. Contact us. Our WhatsApp number is 990 Please message us. But please subscribe to our channel. Jesus' name we bless you. Amen.